It's still the 27th. I thanked all the people who responded positively to my heads up message, but I, um, I have spent hours upon hours today thinking about what I wanted to say next and how to convey my pain that I am stepping away from and the positive good things that I'm stepping into and just how huge of a thing it is for me. And uh, then I spent hours and hours writing a really long thing that, believe it or not, used to be much longer and um, editing it and then rewriting it and then editing it. Um, read it to my spouse a few times, then re-edited it. I just posted it on Facebook. I just posted it. So it's official. It's done. I'm out <laughs> to everyone, even my extended relations and people that I haven't talked to in years and people I used to work with and, you know, the people that aren't part of my day-to-day -day life. Everybody officially knows across the board. And uh, the impact of that the weight of that, I am feeling it really, really heavy. I um, cried a little bit, but I only cried a couple of tears. I, I, I can't seem to bawl anymore uh, ever since I started taking that multivitamin a week ago. Um, I don't even know how many promises this trans system can keep. I feel like I'm making a statement before I have the progress to back it up or whatever, but at the same time, whether this trans system can follow through with their promises or not, I still already am at a place where I accept myself as the guy that I am. So I just, I'm kind of done pretending and living in denial and doing the have one life over here that makes everyone comfortable thing and then one life over here where I wallow alone in misery. I was a little upset. A girlfriend has been working nonstop on schoolwork and I understand that. But I was a little upset that she couldn't even take you know, 10 minutes to listen to the thing and give me her thoughts afterward or something. But at the same time, I know she's working hard, so I'm trying to not feel anything about that. But I also feel like this is probably one of the more impactful moments of my life because this means I've officially come out to everyone. Not just my friends, not just my immediate family, like, everyone. And, I mean, every time I go to get a job from now on, you know, I mean, most workplaces anymore check people's Facebook and social media and crap. They'll be able to see it. Whatever. At least it's out. At least it's done with. I just really wish I had some freaking ice cream or something. I, um, I'm going to read what I wrote, what I posted, the final version <laughs> after hours upon hours of editing and working on it, like it, like at least five hours, probably. <laughs> Here's what I wrote. Change can be good. I used to wish things would change. I yearned for it, but nothing did and I knew it was because I was the common denominator. I was the consistent thing no matter what else external changed, no matter how much I tried to fix myself, nothing progressed. I was depressed chronically. I was making attempts at my own life. I was miserable. I led two different lives, 
one where I was around when I was around people, I tried to put on a smile and was surface happy to make others comfortable, desperately codependent, trying to make sure every single person was as little inconvenienced and content as possible, tiptoeing around the other life, the darkness I tried to keep private. People knew I was not happy, but they knew I would do anything to make them happy, so they just tried to do the normal encourage thing, staying out of it. No one knew how bad it was, or at least I hope no one did. No one knew what to call all the strangeness about me, not me, not anyone. So all my attempting to get acceptance was fruitless. No matter what I did, I was not good enough. Not just at trying to get others to accept me, but me to accept me. I now understand myself growing up in agony. The child who hit puberty early at eight was told that this was just becoming a woman and felt horror. I feel compassion for the kid who spent the next three decades shaving everything from between the eyebrows down in shame and fear. The teen who couldn't wear a swimsuit, so wore shorts with a t-shirt and then literally dug holes in the sand to hide in so no one could see at the beach, despite loving to swim so no one could look at the freak. My heart breaks for the constant dysthymia there since a small child, the never fitting in, the kids bullying and being cruel, the abuse. And I am impressed with the strength that kid had to survive all of it, to get to where I am now. I admire even the mistakes, because that kid found change. I don't hate anyone who didn't understand why I was different, nor do I hate the kid who didn't know how to articulate what I was feeling. When I was a child, even besides the rigid religious expectations, there was just pure ignorance about such things. There were no words like intersex or transgender. There was no such thing. And if it was, people hid it and pretended it had never happened. A kid born with both male and female parts was just a hermaphrodite, some Grecian mythic creature. I wished I could be that creature thinking it would make it okay to be a boy. But those were my wishes. Fantasy. It got out that I liked girls when I was twelve. But what did anyone know to call it except lesbian? So I wore the scarlet letter of that word, tortured by it and the sin everyone said it meant. I didn't know why I had to be so evil just by being alive. Existing shouldn't be a crime. But no one ever thought that maybe it was something else. No one ever even considered that I was actually a boy, including me, even when I was drawn to things masculine. Even when I wanted to wear boy clothes, or have short hair, or liked boy toys, I was expected to act more ladylike and reject those feelings. Everyone thought I was just modest, was just weird, was just a tomboy, just a sinful dyke. I tried through most of my twenties to be a perfect lesbian, turning the accusation into a badge of honor. But I was just as miserable trying to be attractive and still feeling out of place, trying to wear makeup and be more girly, just made me sicker and sicker. I wasted years worth of hours in my life, wondering what was wrong, trying to pray for my soul, staring alone into the darkness, trying to not be sinful or evil as I was convinced I was. Turns out all the times people told me to go pray were a mistake on their part. All the years of self-loathing unwarranted, a lifetime of grief at my own existence senseless. Just no one was educated enough to know. I went my whole life being forced into the wrong box, a box that didn't work and didn't fit because some doctor saw some external thing when I was born and it made him decide I must be a girl. I have always had iatrophobia issues, the terror of doctors, so I avoided testing as I grew and doctor's appointments and it just didn't come up. Then a doctor told me six and a half years ago something that scared me so badly that I went into a full-blown denial and decided that what would be easiest was for me to quietly become non-binary so that it wouldn't bother anyone and everyone could just call me whatever they wanted. A compromise. But that was misery too. It has taken extensive self-searching and therapy to finally get to the point where I could start to live as a man, and honestly, this year doing that has been the happiest I have ever been. I have not taken any testosterone yet, but I am about to start. 
The doctors tried to tell me for a while now that the only thing that could help my physical and mental health would be that, so I have done almost a full year of therapy to prepare. I put in the hours. I no longer feel guilt. I am ready. I am diagnosed, and yes, I got a second opinion. I am a boy. I naturally produce male ranges for my hormones, only they're sickly male ranges. So if a dude walked into the doctor's office with my levels, the doctor would immediately suggest raising the testosterone to avoid major health issues I have had to live with for the past 35 years. I basically have a deficiency that can be treated, much like a diabetic needing insulin. Transitioning into the gender I actually am is the healthiest change for me, and not just medically suggested, but also matches my own wishes I could never express my whole life for fear it would be condemned. I am a good person, and it isn't bad that I exist. You don't judge a pie flavor by the crust on the outside, but by the filling on the inside, and inside I'm a boy. Funny thing is, though, outside I tend to lean pretty boy as well, now that I'm not desperately trying to hide it. I stopped shame-shaving back in March, and I have body hair everywhere, and a beard, and all this before hormone treatment. I decided to let my body grow how it wants to. Once I stopped being the least important person in my own life, I felt free. And thus here I am, openly expressing to all that I have been actively living as a man for half a year now, and shall live that way for the rest of my life. I have been happy having way less dysphoria and less depression. I am about to be able to say I have a hormone balance for the first time in my entire life. It is okay to be different and to follow what might have been too scary to let anyone know my whole life, that when I dreamt at night asleep ever since I was a child, that I was a boy in my dreams. So I accidentally am my own dream come true. How funny is that? Unfortunately, though, this is awesome news and means huge improvements for me. I realize this is hard for some, and that is sad. My body is not a political nor spiritual issue. I have nothing to be ashamed of, and I am transitioning for my personal health. The other sad thing is that some people who would judge transgender rights harshly might use my medical diagnosis as a pass for me in my own personal transition. Allow me to be very clear. Just because my gender dysphoria comes with internal physical male characteristics making transition medically necessary, that does not invalidate the experiences of other trans men, their personal struggles, or dysphoria issues. I know this was long, and I realize some people will not finish reading, but to anyone who has, who accepts me, the man, thank you. Truly thank you. I appreciate each and every person who loves me and cares that I do what is important for my health. Whether you accept me or not, though, I finally accept myself, and that is the best change that has ever occurred in all my almost 36 years. Pure relief. And then I ended it with my name. My full, real name. Not my dead name. And that's what I wrote. So, let's see if people are still as full of hugs and hearts and whatever tomorrow <laughs> as they were today. And let's see how many people unfriend me. But that's okay. But tomorrow, I'm going to go on Facebook and change my name and my gender marker and stuff and, and get myself maybe a, a different icon picture. That's actually, you know, got the beard in it at least. <laughs> Something. Anyway. It's been a very rough day. But I am to the close of the day. You know, it's, it's freaking midnight. <laughs> it's freaking midnight and that means it's the start of a new day. A new day, where everybody knows that I'm a man. So at least there's that. At least there's that. <laughs>